hello guys today we are going to talk about tail recursion so before we start talking about tail recursion I want to uh, explain a few things about recursion first so uh, we all know that recursion is a programming technique in which a function call s smaller instances of itself it's a, a very effective problem solving technique which greatly simplifies the way in which we can solve a problem so in recursion basically what happens is that a function calls itself repeatedly until uh, the base case uh, has been satisfied so uh, let us see a simple example uh, suppose we were to calculate the factorial of a number so we could simply write an iterative function which is as follows which takes an argument of n and we can simply instigate a for loop uh, from uh, 1 until n and then <coughs> we can simply uh, multiply uh, a variable f with the contents of i and then in this way we can uh, simply write a uh, iterative function that calculates the factorial of a given number so the same thing can be done using recursion as well so uh, I'm, I'm sure you have already uh, understood how we can calculate the factorial of a number using recursion so uh, just a quick uh, revision so uh, we will write a function called rfact which accepts an ar argument of n so uh, if the value of n is equal to 0 we are going to return 1 this is the base case otherwise we are going to return uh, n into the same function that is rfact with an argument of n minus 1 so let us try and understand how this works inside a computer so suppose we were uh, calling this function with an argument of 4 so uh, we are calling this function with an argument of 4 so if we look at this code then there are two cases when n equals to 1 we are just going to return 1 otherwise we are going to return n into r fact n minus 1 so in this case the value of n is equal to 4 so it will be the la latter case we are going to return n into r fact n minus 1 so in, in this case n is 4 uh, so we are going to return uh, 4 into r fact 3 now you can understand see and understand that this r factory is itself a function call so again uh, the same function is called uh, this result is uh, pushed uh, into the stack and the same function is called so uh, right now the function is called with an uh, argument of 3 so uh, this statement is going to execute and uh, it is going to return 3 into r fact 2 so similarly uh, using the same logic I uh, said just before uh, you can see that this is also a function call so if we were to uh, if the computer were to execute this uh, again uh, this block of code is going to execute and it's going to return 2 into r fact 1 so again uh, with the same uh, analogy uh, uh, this is also a function call but uh, this function call in this function call the computer is going to return 1 because uh, we have finally uh, reached our base case so uh, <coughs> what happens is that in place of r fact 1 the computer returns 1 and then uh, the results from the stacks are pushed uh, sorry popped since stack is a LIFO structure at first uh, uh, we are going to compute the value of uh, r fact 2 using uh, the newly computed value of r fact 1 so uh, the value starts returning backwards so uh, in c in place of r fact 1 we are going to return 1 so uh, now r fact 2 is going to be computed as 2 into 1 equals 2 now in place of r fact 2 uh, we are going to have 2 so r fact 3 is going to be computed as 3 into r fact 2 that is 3 into 2 equals to 6 and in place of r fact 3 we are going to have 6 so r fact 4 is going to com going to be computed as 4 into 6 equals 24 and this is how we get uh, final results of 24 for the factorial of uh, 4 so what happens in this case is that uh, each time the function is returning values uh, some calculation again has to be done and then only uh, only the calling function is uh, going to uh, be returning value what I mean uh, is that uh, while calculating r fact 4 uh, <coughs> after even after r fact 3 returns we need to compute 4 into r fact 3 so uh, what happens is that even after returning we are computing some cases so uh, this uh, in assembly uh, uh, requires a lot of context switching uh, which is not nice and uh, and it is going to uh, it is going to uh, consume a lot of memory so uh, this process is not uh, that uh, uh, effective in terms of uh, memory consumption so 
Now, uh, let us uh, change the way how we, we solve the programs a little bit and this logic is called tail recursion. So, uh, tail recursion still is a form of recursion but what happens is that as the name suggests in uh, we are going to have a recursive call uh, in the tail of the function that is uh, if the last last thing executed by the function is a, a recursive call then it is it is known as tail recursion. So, what happens in case of tail recursion is that uh, uh, a compiler can uh, Compilers are equipped to optimize uh, these forms of recursion using uh, tail uh, call optimization. So what happens is that they don't consume as much memory as consumed by the uh, normal recursive procedure. Uh, <coughs> that is why uh, they are much more effective than normal recursion. But you also have to understand that not all uh, problems are tail recursive. So uh, we'll look at the uh, example of factorial and we'll try to implement it in a tail recursive way. So uh <coughs> Like I told you before, uh, before we uh, go on and talk about uh, the tail recursive uh, implementation of a factorial algorithm, we must understand that uh, tail recursion is uh, based on uh, tail call optimization performed by uh, the performed by the compiler. And for tail recursion to take place, the last thing executed by the current function should also be a recursive function call. Okay, so we are going to uh, compute the uh, factorial of a number in a tail recursive way. So what we do in this case is that we are going to have uh, two uh, parameters and an accumulator. So uh, uh, n is the uh, number of uh, whose factorial we are trying to compute and accumulator we initially set it to 1 while calling the function. So what happens is that uh, uh, the process is pretty much same but uh, whenever uh, in case of base case um, before uh, if n was equal to 1 we returned uh, 1 as 1 factorial is 1 but in this case we are returning accumulator and let us look at this recursive case so in this recursive case in previously we used to return uh, n into uh, r fact n minus 1 but in this case what we are doing is that we are not uh, going to uh, perform any computation after returning rather while calling we are going to compute the operation uh, compute the uh, uh, compute the uh, multiplication process and then so what happens is that in in each instances of the function call uh, t fact n minus 1 accumulator into n is computed so uh, this is going to be optimized by the uh, compiler and uh, the compiler isn't going to expand many uh, many stack frames for uh, stack frames for each function call because uh, each function call is basically the same so uh, what happens in this case is that we are uh, going to uh, we are going to uh, uh, see the same uh, thing being solved in uh, by using less memory so this is what tail recursion is about and uh, so what happens in this case and let us see and uh, how it is going to be executed so uh, suppose uh, we need to calculate the factorial of 4 and it is going to be computed as 24 so let us uh, see how the process happens so whenever we call uh, the function t fact with an argument of n equals 4 and accumulator of 1 so uh, there are two cases if and else and uh, since n is not equal to 1 n is 4 so uh, else case is going to execute and it is going to return uh, t fact n minus 1 that is 3 and then accumulator is 1 and then n is uh, 4 so uh, it is going to return uh, t fact uh, n minus 1 4 minus 1 is 3 uh, and accumulator is 1 into n is 4 that is it is going to call t fact 3 comma 4 so again what happens is that this will result in this else statement being executed since it is also a function call so uh, it is going to uh, call uh, 3 minus 1 2 accumulator is 4 into n is 3 so this is how it is going to be executed so 4 3 are 12 so this is going to call t fact uh, 2 comma 12 so you can uh, I am pretty sure you have already reduced the analogy here now. So uh, it is going to call uh, t fact uh, t fact 12 into 2. So it is going to call uh, t fact uh, 1 comma 2 into 2. Uh, there was 2 here. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Similarly, accumulated is 12. 12 into n is 2. So we are uh, basically returning this statement. So it is going to call t fact 1 uh, 1 comma 24. And since we have uh, reached the base case, if n is equal to 1. Uh, then we are going to return accumulator which in case it is 24 so this is how the factorial is computed as 20, 24 so what happens in case of tail recursion is that uh, the function calls are optimized by the compiler this is called tail call optimization and we have to understand that not all recursive uh, solutions are tail recursive and uh, now let us uh, try and implement uh, this logic in uh, C so now let us look at the 
programming implementation of uh, the problem we discussed earlier so I want you to open your favorite code editor and then I want you to create a file with an extension of .c anywhere you want it to uh, store so here I'm going to uh, save the file in my desktop and I'm going to name the file uh, tlr.c so uh, now uh, let us include our standard header file that is scio.h then let's define a function which is uh, which is run type is of long kin because factorial is going to be a large number so uh, let's uh, name the function tfact and it is going to accept uh, two uh, parameters the first one is the number the second one is also a long integer because uh, we are going to uh, multiply a lot of big big numbers we might encounter that so we are going to keep the accumulator also as long int now the logic is pretty straightforward if the value of n is equal to 1 that is uh, if the value of n is equal to 1 we can simply return the value of accumulator otherwise if the value of n is something else what we do is that we are going to return the same function call no operations here same function call and as argument we are going to pass n minus 1 and we are going to pass accumulator into n so this is how we uh, uh, implement the factorial using tail recursion now let us look at the main module so uh, let us create a variable called number and let us ask uh, for a number from the user so I asked for a number from the user after that I'm going to store that number uh, I'm going to store that number uh, in a variable called uh, number okay so then uh, let us call the function like this uh, printf on uh, the uh, factorial factorial of number that is percentage d is going to be long integer that is percentage ld because the return type is long integer let us uh, also use an empty line here and we are going to print a number and then we are going to call the function called tfact with an uh, argument of uh, with an argument supplied as a uh, number comma accumulator we are going to pass as one because uh, we are going to multiply things and if we pass it as uh, as zero then and the result is going to be zero so we'll pass it one so at last we'll return zero like this so this is how we implement the factorial using uh, tail recursion so now let, let me run this program so I'm going to open my terminal I'm going to use a GCC compiler to compile the code so uh, my code is saved in desktop so I'll navigate to desktop and then I will uh, there is a file called uh, tail r.c so I'm going to use GCC compiler here I'll write tail r.c dash o dash o tail r so the program compiled without any error then I'm going to execute the program like this uh, so if I give <coughs> 4 it's return 24 so uh, this is how we implement uh, the factorial of uh, number using tail recursion and uh, thing we have to understand is that uh, tail recursion uh, works on the princi uh, principle of uh, uh, tail uh, tail call optimization which is done by the compiler and uh, not all languages support uh, tail recursion and not all recursive uh, solutions can uh, can be uh, solved using tail recursion so uh, uh, I appreciate you guys watching this so if you understood uh, and learned something uh, smash that like button and uh, uh, please uh, subscribe to view more content from me in the future